Well, I already told you that I've been pastoring for 32 years. Prior to that, I was a minister at a young age. You know, you know that, ministered a lot of, a lot of preachings and teachings and all that with me. A lot of experience with God, a lot of experience with God, not too much with angels, but with God. Yeah, I would have little visions here and there, yet not experience. Well, this time, I was in my bedroom and I had a chair because people would come and sit there when they would come and visit me. And, and uh, I'm laying down and, and I see this person walk in. It's a man. He didn't fly in, he didn't have wings, but just like, remember Abraham spoke with three angels and they walked and he washed their feet and fed them and all? Well, this is the way it was with me. These, these men walk in. They all have different features, just like us. I mean, they're not all the same. They're different sizes, just like us. And, and, but their dress is not like us. Their dress was different. They were more like tunics and, and different colors. And couldn't, I can't see them colorblind, but I just see the different, the way that things look. But the first one walk in, he was the tallest of all. He walks in and he sits down. And uh, I look at him and I, I just keep looking up. He, I don't know what he does. He gets up and walks out. So I see him walk out. Then the other one walks in. Hmm. He sits down. Okay. So I'm, uh, he does something. So then he gets up and walks out. The third one was a little more stocky guy. Not, not, but stocky. So he comes in, he sits down and he does something. The last one, he was the shortest, he was the shortest guy. And he sits down for a while, for quite a while. And then I tell, I ask him, what are you doing? And he says, you wanna see? I says, yes, I wanna see. He talked to me and, and I talked to him. And he says, come on, he says, come on. And he picked me up in spirit, not in, not in the flesh, in spirit. Picked me up in the spirit and I got up and I came behind him and I stood behind him and I am on the bed. So what did I see? I see me in the bed and he had me open. And I see, and somehow he did this to me. He allowed me to zoom. I zoomed in and I saw all this black, like, like a haze, like a, like a cloud, like a haze, like a cloud. And anyway, when he zoomed in, it was all little dark balls, cells, little cells, black cells, all black cells, a lot of black cells, all little black balls, little black cells. And this is what he was doing. He was taking them out one by one. I saw him and, and I see him. And then I'm looking to see, where's he putting them at? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find out where he was, but he's taking them out one by one, one by one. And I'm looking and I'm looking. So I, I went back to sleep and I slept. And I woke up. In the morning when I woke up, I told my wife, yo, yo. I said, what? Hey, four angels came in last night. What? Four angels came in and, and they walked in one at a time and they sat down and I told her everything. And I told her what the, the, the smaller one did and how he was taken out. And, and she says, okay, let's get ready to go to Stanford because we just got ready to, to get the, 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 this appointment done with. Okay, so here we go. And I tell you, here's the doctor, back and forth, back and forth. But then he puts him up. He puts him up so that I can see him. And he's going, see? This is when you first started, this is you now. But then when he showed me 
he zoomed when he showed me he zoomed in the x-ray he zoomed in and it was dark and haze and it was all little black balls exactly what i had seen with the angel and i told you yo that's what i saw last night this is what the angels did right there and he was taking them he, exactly from the x-ray was what i saw no no coincidence no accident this is it so now what i saw the proof of what i saw he showed me the x-ray i told you that I would see these 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 tumors and how they were drying and you could see the outline. Well now, zero, not even a trace, not even a mark, nothing that, what, what happened to them? What happened to all these things? Not even a trace. Everything was, he says, we cannot detect any trace in this body. This body telling us that it never had cancer. But yet, here's the x-rays. That's where the miracle what came. The God took it all away. Completely. Completely. I am that miracle. I am that person that you kind of look back and say, was it was it real? It was real. I was in a wheelchair. I was embarrassed. I, 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 I couldn't walk into a store because I couldn't go from here to that chair. I, I felt like, man, what type of a man am I? I was embarrassed, embarrassed. And then when they, I saw people look at me in the wheelchair, man, I saw man look at me. I didn't want to look at them. I didn't know where to look. I felt embarrassed. And I believe God did that for humbleness, for me. Personally, I had to learn what humbleness really was. And it was meant for me. And I took it. I took it. But one thing I want to, there's, there's an end to this and I'm going to get to it. But one thing I want to say, when I was in Stanford, I used to pray to the Lord. The Lord stopped me from praying one time. He says, I don't want you to pray that way. Now, I am a, I'm a man that has been in church for a while, prayed for, for a long time. I never had any problems. But this time God says, stop. I don't want you to pray like that. I'm going to show you how to pray. Now, it's biblical because he showed the disciples how to pray. He would tell people how to pray. So I said, so I listened to him. This is what he told me. He says, when you pray to me, you got to be vocal, first of all, which is right. You have to tell me like this, Lord, remember my, my prayers. Remember my offerings. Remember my sacrifices. Remember my tears. Remember my worship. See, and to me, I felt I'm, I feel like I'm embarrassed. I, I do that, I do that all the time. He says, I want you to tell me that. And it's in the Bible with, with David. David will say, Remember my offerings. Remember my David says that to him. So I did it. I was obedient. I was obedient and I did it. And the Lord answered. The Lord answered. You got to be obedient to whatever God tells you. And sometimes we feel like, isn't that kind of childish? Or we feel like, no, that's not what I want. It's not what you want. It's what God wants. I don't want to do it that way. It's not the way you want to do it. It's the way God wants it done. And, and I'll tell you how, how uh, tremendous it worked. It worked how far it went. I was checked. I was checked years for like, I think four years, five years after in case the, the cancer would, would come back. I, I was always, but I never had any problem and I never had any pain. I had five surgeries, five surgeries. And 
every surgery, well, from the beginning, from the, from the tumor, the doctor says, um, how, how bad is your pain from zero to 10? And I would go, zero. He says, okay, maybe the anesthesia hasn't worn out yet. I'll come back a little bit. He come back. Pain, zero to 10. Zero. Hmm. We cut you. We pulled out a tumor about the size of a grapefruit. You have no pain. No pain. Second time they operated. They took some gallstones out. Pain, zero to ten. I go, zero, and I want to go home. And he says, wait, wait, Pastor, wait. At least let us observe you. We know you, ha you don't have pain. So fr from then on, every operation, they already knew. We know, no pain, and you want to go home. Right, but we have to keep you for a while. We have to. But I never had pain. And they, and they started to see that. They would bring people, talk to me, and ask me a lot of questions. And that's all I would say. I even said, hey, I'm bored. Bring me a computer, bring me a laptop, bring me. And they did. They brought me a laptop. And I was doing my, my district work, work in my bed there because I, I was bored. But there came a time when I did lose my appetite. I couldn't eat for nothing. I had no appetite. And I'll tell you what happens. The chemo has a smell to it. And the chemo has a taste to it. And I, even in the water, you taste it. In the smell, you, you smell it. You, you can smell it in your skin. You can smell it when you, anything you put in your mouth, you taste it. it it's, it's ugly. When I had, the, when I took a shower, they would give me a special type of, of, of soap and I have to wash myself three times to get the smell off. My clothes, if I had my own clothes, I had to burn them or wash them three times because of the, of the, of, of the, of the chemo. So I would only use their pajamas or whatever they had there. But this is how that, that chemo, it's, it's ugly stuff. So I couldn't eat because I would smell it and it would, whew, whew, it just, even water, whew, and, and, and they would tell me, you got to eat. But all the food in, in the hospital smelled like it, or it tasted like it. So I told my, my wife, give me a burrito from out there. Give me a burrito, bring something from home. Bring something from home. And the doctor says, give him whatever he wants. Bring him from outside, whatever he wants, because he has to eat. They would try to give me some insure. They would try to give me, I tried to eat candy because I'm a good, I have a, I have a sweet tooth. I wanted cookies, cakes, anything. I couldn't, I couldn't. I would try eggs different way, boiled, scrambled, any bread, nothing, nothing, nothing. I, could, I, I couldn't eat for a while. I couldn't eat at all. So I struggled with that. But when I came home one day, I told you, Yo, make me a, make me a ribeye steak. What? Yes. And, and my son came and cooked it and I ate it all. And then and he says, what are you going to want to eat? I would like to eat another ribeye steak. So I was not eating nothing but meat. And when I went to the doctor, the doctor says, wow, you're doing good. You're not anemic anymore. You're not, you're doing good. I says, what are you eating? And I says, meat. And Julius, he is nothing but meat, Dr. Arnold. What do he says? Give him all the meat he wants. It's helping him a lot. So the body kept asking for it. Ribeye steak. It, it even asked which kind. Ribeye steak. So it was good. It was, for me, it was good. But anyway, so here I come to the end. My last, my last x-ray. And the lady says, this is going to be your final x-ray. We won't x-ray you anymore after this. Fine, let's get it over with. So she x-rays me. And then, and then I'm over here putting on my shirt. And she says, she comes out and says, sir, sir. And I says, yes, ma'am. She says, are you a man of God? And I says, yes, ma'am. I am a pastor. And she says, I knew it. I says, why? She says, I want to show you something. Okay. 
show me. So she takes me back where the x-rays are. Again, these are the big ones. This is the first time in all this time that I see my x-ray, my bones. I see my skeleton. I hadn't seen it. It was all black. I hadn't seen nothing. So now I see for the first time my, my lungs, my skeleton, everything. And, and, and I says, oh, wow, look at my lungs, nice and fat and, and, and healthy. She says, that's not what I want to show you. No, what is it? She says, look, I want to show you something. Look at your brain, look at your lungs, look at your heart, look at the pancreas, your lungs, your kidneys, your liver, your intestines. Look at all this. They're all brand new. There's no, nothing worn. There's, they're, they're, they're like a baby. They're brand new. You have all your organs are brand new. Is that a miracle or is that a miracle? Huh? She says, your outside hasn't changed, but the, but the inside. I says, I says, and I says, thank God. Thank God. God, in the Bible says, God can make all things new. Again, Bible. God can make all things new. And I am a witness. God can make all things new. So, you know, and, and um, the church in the beginning, the church was real down. I, uh, real down, they were, they, they knew this was going to happen, but they were praying. They were praying. And I would communicate through uh, videos. My son would video me when I would come home and I would talk to the church and encourage the church. And I would tell the church, I have no pain. So as far as suffering, I'm not suffering. As far as, uh, the only thing is, I get very weak. But it's, there's no pain, no pain. So just let's keep trusting God. And I would encourage them, I would encourage them. And that's how I would I would uh, communicate with them. And, um, uh, you know, God has proved to me that he's real. And I'm sure whoever is listening to these words or this video, maybe in your own way, God has tried to deal with you. And you know when God has tried to deal with you. You all know. No one can say, well, no, nothing has ever. God has tried because God is not like that. He's a fair God, very just. And he has tried with everybody. But our reaction is what we think is best for us instead of taking what God is trying to give us. Well, you got to understand that God doesn't make mistakes. He didn't make a mistake with me. When the doctor says, you have stage four cancer, and he looked at me, I could not believe that God had made a mistake. I think about it now. I could not believe that God made a mistake or let me down. After I, th I, I believe so highly of him. Remember? What are you taking an aspirin for? When you have God. That was me. With an aspirin. Well, now, this is me with the cancer. God is real. God is true to his word. The angels... Go to Psalms 90 and it will say, God tells the angel, I will give you charge upon this person. You take care of them, you protect them, you provide for them. This is Bible. That happened to me. Not only one, but four. So, so that other one called for help. And I am living proof that God is true to his word. He's a faithful God. He does keep his promises, and that word that you read in the Bible is real. And I am living proof that God does work miracles. He does all things new and perfect. And here I am. COVID didn't touch me. 
I'm all, I, I, I feel, I feel protected. I, honestly, I feel protected. You know that I have, I have had dreams with God. You don't hear this too much from even ministers and pastors. I don't hear them say too much, but I have had dreams with God. One of the latest dreams I had, which was about maybe six months ago, eight months ago. I was in church and uh, God was with me. And everywhere I went, people, well, I have this problem. Don't worry. God's with me. And we would, I would pray and know that God, but I mean, if I'm telling you my dream, but this literally, God was with me. He was there. Like there was a figure there and he was God. And wherever I went and I would tell the persons, the members, hey, God is with me. Don't worry. We're going to take care of it. And, and God was answering. This is real. This is real. I've had like three dreams with God. And he's, he's with me. I am not making any, any of these things up. I'm telling you what I've, I mean, people can talk about whatever they had with the devil and saw this and not me. I'm not seeing devils. I'm seeing God. So maybe somebody's turning the page here. It's about time. We have so much wickedness and so much ugliness and evilness. Hey, there's another side in life. It's called good and holy. And it's real. God is not hiding. God wants us to know him. I already told you, maybe he, maybe he knows that, hey, I'm waiting for money to come from heaven, you know. But I got something better. I got a miracle. Money cannot buy miracles. And I got it free through his word because it's called grace. So here I am. And I will tell anybody, I'm not afraid to tell anybody how real God is, how powerful God is, and how true to his word he is. Don't be afraid to talk to God. Don't be afraid to ask God for help. I would guess my best advice would be this. Sit down and say, that man in that video said you were real, God. Talk to me like you talked to him. Do it. Prove him. I'm telling you, because it's real. So I think I know the answer to this question, but I think the million dollar question is, um, Pastor John, why are you still here? Why do you believe God is, has preserved your life? Very good question. And I believe God has still something for me that I need to do. And I'll, and I'll answer it like this. I've always had gifts by God. I've always had gifts. Tremendous gifts. I have a lot of witnesses. When people have pain, I feel their pain. No matter what it is, I feel it. And up to the point of a heart attack, I feel it. Now, when the cancer happened, some of this went dorm. I'm going to use the word dorm. And I felt like, what happened? What happened? But then I went to a convention and the brother Romo was there from Arizona. And uh, I told him, Brother Romo, I had all these gifts. God was using me in an awesome way. Now, after, after, now that I have the, the cancer, and I'm, I'm, I'm over this. I kind of, I don't feel it anymore. And then he prayed over me. And this is what he told me. That was phase one. You're going now into phase two. And God's going to use you differently. I'm st I still, now I'm, I'm getting, I feel, I feel, I still feel now. But now I see, listen to this. It's, it's going to sound odd. I see inside the people. And I'll give you an example. I had a sister here. She came. She was pregnant. I'm having a problem with a baby. The doctors feel that if the baby comes, either I will die or the baby will die. And we don't know. So she was right there, and I put my hands on her, and I prayed. And when I saw 
Inside of her, I saw a lump of flesh full of blood. I saw that. I did not tell her anything. This is what I said. Hmm, we're going to have to go into a fast and a prayer. And I said, we're going to give it, we're going to give it 10 days. Fast of prayer. And I'm going to ask the church to do a, a, an exp expiation service. You heard of expiation, right? It's like an atonement. I says, we're going to do this. I've never heard of it. I never heard of it. I even never seen, I only seen it in the old days in the Bible. But I've never heard of it now. It says, we're going to do it. I told that to the ministers. How are we going to do it? We're going to be the sacrifices. The living sacrifice and we're going to come and fast. And we're going to, and I told them, we don't have to have fast to, to fast 10 days straight. But we'll fast three days straight. And the other 10 days, we'll fast as we can per day. We all take turns. And we did it. And we fasted. And that baby has been born. She's there. Now she had, has she has had another baby. And all because God is still God. Now, but I got to see in sight. And that's not the first one. I've already prayed through people that I have seen inside of them. Their need. I told somebody, you're a person that cannot have babies because you have a knot. I see a knot. But anywhere we're going to pray, she had a baby. I had one, one person here from, from the city of Hollister. Uh, they, they were a couple. They needed prayer. So the baby was deformed. Their face, the baby face was still deformed. And I saw it deformed like, like this, like, like this. Like it was deformed. So I told them. Very simple. I walked in and says, I'm going to pray only one time, very short, and God will answer. Do you believe? That was, my, that was my entrance and my approach. Well, the lady says, I believe, I believe. He said, uh, I'm not, I don't believe. I don't. Well, then it's not going to happen. I'm walking out. So he says, no, wait, wait, come back. He says, I can't. Either you believe or you don't. I can't waste my time or, or God's time. He says, but I want to believe. He says, you want to believe? You must believe or I'm not going to pray. So he says, okay, I believe. He says, you're not saying it just to say it. No, I believe. So I prayed. Very simple prayer. The next day, 5 p.m., he calls me. They had this, uh, what do they call it? Like when they take those, those photos of the babies again, those, those newborn um, anyway, he showed me the, pa the baby, and the baby's face was complete. That man got baptized in Jesus' name. But I could see. See, now this is what God's doing with me. Phase two. What am I doing here now? Maybe there's a phase three. Phase two is plenty. But phase three now, I'll tell you the difference now. The word, the word, a lot of revelation of the word, not new revelation, just revelation, revelation, the word, like I've never seen it before. I, I can explain it a lot. I can teach a lot. I think that's it. I think that's where I'm at now. I feel I feel like that's it. I, I, I feel good. I, I mean, the, the, the bishop and all that, they, they understand me. They, they, they work with me. And, uh, but in my, in my church, I teach a lot. And I teach what I see and what I feel and what the Lord is revealing. A lot, a lot. All the mysteries, all the, all the mysteries, all the um, the uh, the uh, the scriptures, you know, and and he gave them the understanding to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Well, I have come to learn 
all the mysteries. And I teach him. And I found that I found one, one dispensation. There's only seven dispensations, but I found a, another dispensation inside a dispensation. And it's called the dispensation of God. And it's only for ministers, only for the ministry. And, and, I, and I teach that. And I mean, I could write a book on it, but, and it's called, I call it, in fact, the Bible calls it. If you would go to, I think it's Colossians. You will go to Colossians, you will see it. it says, Paul says, the dispensation of God. This is a dispensation inside the dispensation world. So I, right now it's the word that's coming out to me. Very clear, enlightened revelation. So that's where, that's why I think God has kept me. And I'm here, I'm getting older, but I remember when I used to go look for the old man to, to talk to him, give me some wisdom word so now my day but i i am also a miracle i never i never ex i never thought you never know but so here i am so but i really have enjoyed this with you i i pray that um you have heard what you needed to hear and receive what you needed to receive and and for those that are listening maybe this will open your eyes to seek god for who he is but you must be baptized in jesus name and filled with the holy ghost live a holy life and be repented or it won't work that's the way it works so good, Pastor John. I feel like, you know, uh, only I'm going to watch this 10 years from now and just be so uh, grateful for the opportunity. And, you know, one day we're all going to be gone. You know what I mean? And I think this is a, um, a rare opportunity where we're going to be able to look back and this is going to go beyond your years. Yes. Generations yes. to come. People yes. are going to watch this and people are going to believe God again because of your faith. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yes. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful. This is awesome. Yeah. Very deep. Now yes. we're just mainly here to listen yes. because there's so much to take in. But God is real. Remember, for years, I'm talking years, we search for a miracle. Blindly, blindly. God doesn't let us down. The day came. When I got to see for myself, no one told me, no one, um, I mean, I saw the power of God right in front of me. And then what happened to my dad? I mean, I mean, that was, some, I couldn't, my dad telling me God is great. Wouldn't look at him yet from there, from my dad to see the power. Wow. It's, this is a story. I mean, I, this you cannot make these things up. This is a real thing that somebody's going to read one day and say, this actually happened. To close off, Pastor, what advice, what would be something that you would share with someone who's about to face the biggest challenge in their life? I know this was your biggest trial, your biggest, and... It's not done, right? I may face something. Stephen might go through something, you know, and or someone's going through something. What would be your words? If you are people, if you are people that trust God and have followed God, you, both of you, you have followed God for a while. Stevie, you have been through big trials in your life, through ups and downs, you too. We all have battles, we all have scars, we all have um, wounds. Nevertheless, when the biggest one comes, I believe that you will not have fear. I believe that you won't have any fear. I didn't have fear. 
And I think that was the key. I didn't have fear because how many times does the Bible says, fear not? I guess I didn't know that and I, I did it automatically because the doctor looked at me and says, you're gonna be okay. You know why? Because he didn't see any fear. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't moved at all. No, I wasn't moved. Brother Veloz says, I couldn't understand it. You were not moved, you didn't phase in any, it, it didn't bother, I mean, I couldn't believe it. So I believe when the time counts for you, like it did me, you will not have fear. Especially you two, because you're here. You're, 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 you're hearing this in person. But I believe that if you believe in God and you do trust God, when you do face that, that biggest battle of all, a challenge, you will not have fear. For the Lord is with me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with me. Well, it was an honor. God bless you, Stevie. God bless you, Juan. Uh, to me, yeah. To me, this was also something special. I appreciate you for doing this. And uh, I think that this will be a blessing. And that's what we want it to be, a blessing. That's it. In Jesus' name. There is no pain. I'm not suffering. It's just I get very, very tired and very, very fatigued. But I have three more sessions to go. And I keep asking for your prayers tremendously. Tremendously. Please don't let go of the prayer. Por favor, no paren la oración. And I will continue to pray for you too. I love you. I love you in the name of Jesus.